Jumbo fellow adventurers and thoughts become things. I'm Mike Dooley. This is another spiritual tune-up. Thanks for your really cool, fun questions posted on Facebook and or Instagram the day of the broadcast. The question I just got, uh, a bit random. What about dinosaurs? What's their purpose? And evolution, how does that fit in? Specifically, uh, Mike, what impact, if any, did the dinosaurs have on our spiritual evolution? If we don't reincarnate as animals, then what was their purpose for being here before us? Why didn't they just inhabit another planet if they didn't have anything to do with humans? I love dinosaurs. My little boys are crazy about dinosaurs and I get our human fascination with them. But aside from that, what was their purpose for being here? All right, kind of cool, kind of fun, and it gives me an opportunity to talk about some stuff I would probably never otherwise get to talk about. So thanks for asking this random question. Um, to put the whole thing into context, uh, to go back to draw on some of my most recent talks, uh, the origins of time, space, and matter, the origin of the physical universe was divine mind, source energy, call it the universe, Call it God, call it whatever you will, but it ain't totally, no way, random or accidental. I mean, there's intelligence everywhere. Our top shelf scientists say that matter isn't solid. It's whirling organized energy. Who organized it? It didn't organize itself. Divine mind is the source of all. And the way it all began was divine mind, God, for lack of a better terminology, but not God of any religion. Um, but divine mind had in thought a vision of its desired end result, a playground where divine mind could splinter off into zillions of incredible particles and not have to be everywhere always at once. Dimensions were born, here versus there, now versus then, time came into the scene, and suddenly God had a playground that God could not have had any other way, making possible adventures into love and beauty and learning that could not have happened if you're everywhere always at once. Just everywhere always at once, please. There needs to be a hook. There needs to be some leverage. There needs to be some context. You need to lose yourself to find yourself. And in the losing and finding, worlds are born. So literally, divine mind held in thought a vision of a utopian existence that seemed to be independent of divine mind. It's like me and reality. That's how we interpret it, me and the physical world. And then we end up reacting to the physical world and game on. Now there's lions and tigers and bears. Now there's fears. Now there's passions. Now there's hopes. Now there's dreams. Now there's dreads. And all of these things set you into physical motion, even though it's all happening inside of your mind, even though it's all happening inside the heart of God. Now you think otherwise and you fall in love and you get scared and you be really happy and it's just this unending odyssey until we kind of been there, done that in every realm possible. And of course, as I've shared before, you can't do it in one short little lifetime the way we burn our bodies out, you know, in less than a hundred years typically, you know, because they're designed to go indefinitely. So if you're going to fizzle out, you know, in less than a hundred years, you come back and you come back as male, you come back as female, you come back left brain inclined, right brain inclined. Think of all the different adventures you can have based on different filters, based on different parents. That's why you choose your parents and they chose you. Uh, it's, it's this incredible odyssey. So now uh, I haven't forgot about the dinosaur bit. <laughs> So now when you understand that divine mind wanted this bastion of order and perfection that seemed to take care of itself, it does indeed need to self-maintain. It needs to self-maintain. You've got these beings that breathe oxygen. Well, you need something to absorb the oxygen and, um, well, that's us. Uh, we exhale carbon di dioxide, right? So, so we need something to absorb the carbon dioxide out. So so God, and here's where it gets really wild, and this is from some deep, profound books, most of which were channeled. God created the fauna and the flora. But was it God, the Almighty? Seth, dictated by Jane Roberts. I mention Seth every week. Seth is 
this lofty, lofty entity that, that has the perspective of all of its lifetimes, that is channeled through Jane Roberts to, to bring clarity to reality so that we can have traction and have more, light, uh, more fun in our lives. Seth would say that even from where Seth was, at this extremely lofty place, that not even Seth could comprehend uh, the, the source of the source of the source, that, that it would go way beyond Seth's grasp. And sometimes Jane Roberts would channel Seth, and Seth too, she gave him a name, Seth too would come in. So here's Jane Roberts, here's Seth, like just pff, celestial out there, and like you, the nether reaches of ad infinitum. And then sometimes Seth too would descend. And Seth too would say, we can't even comprehend your reality except we understand you are playing in fields of love. And we want you to know that you are loved and that your evolution, spiritual evolution, is important to our evolution. And, and she would totally change tone uh, and it would be amazing. And then Seth one would return and then Jane would return. It's like, oh my gosh, I tell you all of that. Because there's all these other layers of consciousness, these sparks of God, if you will. And you might say that human beings are way down here. It's not that we're less. It's just a different adventure where we've chosen to forget more. There's other layers where they chose to forget less. And there's some that went and forgot what we forgot, but they've climbed back up. And boy, do they have perspectives that can give us a handle on things. But there's all these other levels of God personalities. Call them the archangels. Call them angels. Call them guides. Call them helpers. Call them whatever you want to call them. But there's a lot more levels of consciousness than just human beings versus God, the big one. And it is all these other layers that created the fauna, that created the, the otter, that created the dolphin and the minnow and the bacteria and the cellulite and the it just every manner of creation was thought of. Not just by one God who said, I want it all. That literally, it was divine mind. But what layer, I couldn't tell you, that created this bastion of perfection for us to have a playground. I probably didn't need to go all the way up to the top, top office. It was some other level of God, closer to where we are, that got the ball rolling, so to speak. And we perpetuate it. Every one of the books that I've read that are profoundly inspired and almost always channeled have said it was minds like yours that designed each and every flower, each and every being. Now, in the beginning, there was the end result in mind, a playground, an oasis for learning, discovery, and adventure, and big bang. Big bang, the world, the physical universe as we know it came to be. This is called spontaneous creation. Scientists have no problem with big bang theory, but they have a huge problem with spontaneous creation. They say nothing could be spontaneous. You can't just have a new species. Every species was at one point a brand new species, and there was no evolution that brought that species here. This is the world according to me, influenced by some of what I read. So all of a sudden, you've got Big Bang, and the world, and the gravity, and the mathematics, and the sciences, and everything needed to support it, including tons of species, and... Um, symbiotic relationships where one takes care of the other, one's breathing out carbon dioxide, one's breathing out oxygen, and they, the whole thing in an instant came to be so that we could have our journeys. But in the instant that they came about, tweaks and differences needed to be made. We call this evolution. Thank you, Darwin. You missed a few beats there. To think that all of this came about from an amoeba is uh, short-sighted, uh, is uh, faulty. It all came about in one big bang, and then the turtles grew longer necks, and then the birds could fly a little bit farther, and then a few new species were spontaneously introduced. Remember, as our talk went yesterday, we're living in an eternal now that does boggle the human brain. But in an eternal now, not only could you just reinvent a new species or have one delivered by a higher being, but it could seamlessly be woven into the fabric of our everyday so that it seems like it has a history and we can even find fossils of it. In your nighttime dreams, 
worlds are born and you have a memory of earlier times in your nighttime dream that was born in the instant that you dreamed it. So things are not as they seem. Back to dinosaurs. So dinosaurs were part of the maintenance program. Just like the world needed by uh, bacteria and uh, every creature needed cells and molecules. Well, we needed, we needed an ocean and we needed land and we needed animals that would clean up the ocean and that would clean up the land and they would clean up after each other. When, uh, when one would die, there would be the, the decomposition. The whole thing was in divine mind and nothing had to be anything. We could have lived great without bumblebees, but something else would have to do bumblebee jobs. We could have done great without the dinosaurs. They're not important to our spiritual evolution other than they were part of the maintenance package that came along with planet Earth. If we got rid of the dinosaurs, however, something else would have to come in and do the job that the dinosaurs did. And remember, a lot of reality is just about joy and love and play. It's like, look, look, check out that dinosaur I just made. It's bigger than your dinosaur. Hey, your dinosaur just ate my dinosaur's head off. Um, now, of course, this is done at a much higher level where there's love and comprehension and enlightenment and cooperation among the gods who are creating this. I say gods plural because, okay, there's source energy and it comes down and it keeps coming down and it keeps coming down. And there's all these other layers of God, other layers of personalities with wisdom, some of which came up from the human level, some of which came down. All of it is one. All of it is God Almighty. And so adjustments have been made in the form of evolution. And many of these books, many, uh, that are so profound in every regard, speaking of life's beauty, our power, and the love that's everywhere. When they go off tangent to some random idea about you know dinosaurs coexisting with human beings, I give it the benefit of the doubt. When everything else is about love and beauty and power, and the book clearly it excites me and other people to live better lives. And then they mention dinosaurs and human beings living at the same time. I'm not going to say, well, that part's wrong. It's like, if everything else is right in that book, this part is right too. So many of these books said that human beings did live at the time of the dinosaur. And that there are many civilizations, as I said last week, that simultaneous, that existed prior to our civilization, Atlantis, Lumoria, Mu, and other ones that achieved heights greater than our own, technologically speaking, spiritually speaking, and, and other realms and other ways to measure their advancement. Many, we have been on the earth as human beings, whether we're alien spawns or not, for millions and millions, perhaps a billion years, although our science hasn't shown that yet. It hasn't shown up yet. I understand that you must think I'm a nut if I say that, but based on my sources where everything else was about love and beauty, I have no problem believing this whatsoever. So there was a time, perhaps all the time, that the dinosaurs were here. I don't know if it overlapped or if it was concurrent entirely. Human beings lived when the dinosaurs lived. And from one of these books, I forget which ones, I'm sorry about that, um, they said that the dinosaurs pretty much wreaked havoc, and, havoc, uh, and that people were just, you know, life was unbearable. People were prey. You had to live in caves, and uh, you're lucky if you, you know, you reached adulthood. Um, it, was, it was horrific. It didn't work. So the gods hit the reset button vis-a-vis, -vis, hmm, how can we reset this stage without disrupting all the other things? A meteorite, okay, a comet or something. And perhaps, I'm just speculating, connecting the dots of what science thinks is the cause of their uh, extermination versus the need for them to be exterminated. Hey, let's just make them little bitty. We'll call them lizards and toads, okay? Let, let, let's not get rid of that cool idea. It was a lot of fun, but we just can't have them eating up our entire civilization. So there was a reset. Uh, and, and this is how life has continued. There was the Big Bang. There are the introduction, spontaneous creation of other species done cleverly. Can't just ruin the day. Just can't have a new species in Manhattan all of a sudden. It has to be snuck in there so that it won't disrupt the beliefs prevailing at the time of its introduction. And then some were going to extinct and some come back. Um, 
Oh my gosh, what a world we live in. And it's our playground. It is for our growth and our glory. Uh, let's see what else here. I think I hit all the points I wanted to hit. It's been 15 minutes. All right, everybody. Thanks for the great question. If you have a random question, I'd love uh, to take a stab at it. Post it below on Facebook and or Instagram. Hey, and did you know that every year I certify folks to reach those who have not been reached with my core content, stuff that I've created, my PowerPoints. I certify them, give them a license for life at no cost. The certification costs money, um, but they can use my material and my content for life. Check out the fine print. There's not much there, but you do have to agree that you give credit. And it's not all of my material. It's the material from my best-selling book, Infinite Possibilities, The Art of Living Your Dreams. Click the link below or swipe up in my bio on Instagram, and you'll see that at the end of September, we're having a four-day virtual online Infinite Possibilities certification training. If you'd like to reach those who have not yet been reached with the truth, the world needs you. Plus, you teach best what you most need to learn and you will become your number one student. Okay. Thanks everybody. See you manana. Have the, have a happy Thursday. Um, and, uh, let's see here. Let's see who's, who's hanging on. Michelle, Carol, Tammy, glad you're here on Facebook. Isabel, Diane, Dianita. I'm sorry if I got that right. Peaceful goddess. Okay, everybody. Hasta pronto. Te amo.